Mm -hmm. So first and last name, please. Um, my person's first name is Mark. And uh, best point of contact is your mobile, this number? Uh, yep, or 09. I, I did actually send an email through to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, it is all on there. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, can I just have your address again? Uh, do you mind repeating that? Sure, uh, the address is... Um, what's it in regards to? Uh, talking about care? Um, no, no, no. I'm, what's happened is I've just been researching law for the last three or four years. Um, and I've, I've, there's a lot of rubbish out there on YouTube. Um, and I'm trying to basically test the validity as to the common law right to travel and whether or not it exists in New Zealand. Um, uh, yeah, there's, oh, there's a common law right to travel from point A to point B unencumbered. Um, as opposed to being a person requiring a driver's license to travel to drive in a motor vehicle, um, there's the, I don't know if you understand the difference between the words I'm using, but um, yeah, so there's there's a, a, a validity of of common law right to travel, and I've, I've called um, a gentleman by the name of Burden Tafera, who is the North Shore Police Prosecutions Manager, and I and I asked him whether or not New Zealand was a common law country. What it is, yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah, right, okay. So, he said it isn't. No. Right, no, so, yeah. yeah, so if, if he's getting that sort of fundamental fact wrong, I'm not going to keep asking him more questions. Now, I've, I've contacted the New Zealand um, Transport Association and, and asked them, and I've asked them to distinguish the different persons in law and I'm sure you're aware there's about five different types of interpretations of the word person in legislation. And they just said to me, person isn't defined any, any, you know, it's you're either a person and that's it. They've, they've said to me, there's no difference between a natural person and a legal person or a body corporate, unincorporated body or corporation soul. You know, so obviously that person that was responding to me wasn't legally trained either. Now, I, I'm under the understanding that the New Zealand Bill of Rights, Section 24G, gives me the right to have interpretation of the language used in courts by lawyers, you know, legalese. And I'm just trying to get to the, to the bottom of whether or not I require a license as a man to travel freely in my private mode of conveyance on New Zealand, as opposed to being a person driving a motor vehicle in New Zealand. Do you get what I'm saying? So, right, uh, so it, it's, <laughs> it's probably a bit much to take in, but yeah. yeah. So, mainly your sort of overarching questions, um, common law right to travel. Yeah, yeah. And you want to test the validity of that. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I, I at the moment, like, I, I bought a, an old ex-ambulance a wee while ago, and, I mean, it hasn't been registered for years, um, and I still managed to travel in that quite happily from Wellington to Auckland without a problem. Now, whether or not it was legal, was beside the point, it was lawful for me to travel from one point to the other in my private, because it wasn't registered, so therefore if it's not a registered vehicle, there's, land transport has no authority over it. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's just, it's just my property, it's not a vehicle, it's not being used for commerce, it's not a private passenger vehicle. I, I like yeah. to I like to break down words and figure out how we're all sort of governed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that you've been interested in law. <laughs> no, I'm just a man. Just a man who oh, basically I got a speeding ticket four years ago. I didn't agree with for thirty dollars, and I thought, how did they manage to get away with all of this? And I started studying it. Now I have eight law dictionaries: Black's Law, Butterworth's Law. I've got, I've got so many dictionaries to find the correct interpretations, and it seems to me that to get the correct interpretation I should go to the author. So, you know, if I, if I want to know what legislation means and the words in legislation, of course I would go to like the Interpretations Act to make sure I get the correct interpretation of the word, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's what, not what, yeah. So it's really just that simple. I'm just sort of breaking down the different capacities that I, a man, can be within whichever society I choose to be a member of. And, and what my rights are as an equal, because I thought if we're all men, we're all equal before the law. I mean, you know, not being yeah. gender specific yeah. there, no offence to women. <laughs> you know, we're, we're all the same. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah well, that's awesome.
Mm. Well, and, the, and the beauty is I put it all on YouTube. So it's not to try and dispel all of these these idiots out there going and standing in courts and arguing whether or not they're a person in an administrative hearing or, you know, I, I'm all I try to do is I seek legal professional interpretations as opposed to just going by what I think. Sure. Um, I have Sorry, I'll be yakking. Um, so, um, your, if you don't mind, um, um, your age, please. Okay. And have you used that service before? Um, I have called the number before um, and got sort of instant advice there and then, but I haven't actually been on any database, so to speak, that I'm aware of. I'm yeah, sure I am on a few of them, but. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, um, hopefully you'll that would be fantastic. Sorry, what was your name again? Monica. Monica, you've been lovely. Totally okay. appreciate your time. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Bye-bye.